What's going on, everybody? My name is Marvel Bishop. We are back here again at Convos with Bishop. Um, appreciate everybody for listening, for watching, uh, YouTube, Instagram, everybody, pretty much everybody for rocking. We're up in beautiful Bricker right now. Um, man, it's, uh, it's been a minute since we did this, honestly. And um, this particular interview, actually, is actually a long time coming. So before, you even, before I even introduce you, like how long has it been since I've been trying to get you to have a conversation? Because I know you're not really the person to like be in front yeah. of the camera, you know what I'm saying? I'm very, you know, to myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I pretty much don't let people get too close to me and stuff, but um, I've been working at it, so it's been getting a little bit better. Um, but it's been a while. It's been yeah, like, it's yeah. Been like it's been, about, it, well, before what? that, actually, it's actually been a while since uh, we've actually had a, you know, we've pretty much hung out, honestly. You know yeah, saying? it's been a hot minute. Yeah, a hot man. minute. Close, um, look, what, close to a year? Almost Possibly? a year. Possibly, yeah. pretty much. Um, the um, One of the only people in existence that is bigger than me, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, I mean. So. <laughs> plead the fifth on that, man. <laughs> They yeah, do. man, my man, Mr. Fane and Kevin, man. What's going on, man? How are it's you? a pleasure, man. I'm Everything's good. Hey, blessed. Just happy yeah. to be here, man. Happy to it's be cool, involved. It's cool, man. It's cool. Um, so I kind of want to go back into like where exactly did we or how did we actually meet? How did we meet? Yeah. Um, it was a Philly in the club. Um, I want to say that you were with a client at the mm -hmm. time. And I may have actually was... I probably was, was working at the club at the time. Okay. A strong possibility. Which, I, I can't. Which club is it that? It could have been Liv. Okay. I don't know if it's that far back. Um, it could have been Liv or it could have been. No, 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 no. I think we were in the Wynwood area. I think it was in the, we was in the Wynwood area where we actually met okay, so physically. I, okay, okay. So the first time, because we've known each other, I guess, vicariously, maybe for like almost like five, six years, I think. Yeah. Um, because, you know, like Shamir's like one of my mentors. I know you yeah. through him. Okay. Um, but. I think I met, yeah, that's right. I met you at our house in Wynwood. Physically, yeah. Yeah, yeah because I, yeah. I had one of the contracts there. Mm -hmm. And then pretty much, you know what I'm saying, just met you. And then mm -hmm. we pretty much got the politic and basically, I was like, damn, this nigga's big as fuck. No, no, no. <laughs> this dude took care of me. He made me look like an all-star when I yeah. went there with the girl. Yeah, so I was. <laughs> now, we always got to take care of yeah. family, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I just um, wanted to pretty much have a conversation with you, man, into um, not exactly pretty much like you know what you do because i mean you know a lot of people already know like what you do but i really want to have a conversation on, like you know who you are as a person you know what i'm saying okay. and um I know, don't, don't get nervous now you know no, 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 i, I no, know you don't do this no, you're fine. No, no. trust me <laughs> like, i'm good under the pressure so, so, here's, yeah. so here's a question i want to ask so yeah. pretty much um you know uh pretty much into fitness okay bodyguard right yes um personal protection close protections and for people who do not know what is actually the difference between personal protection and close quarter or is it pretty much synonymous because i know like those are titles that people put and sometimes i get you know confused I, I, as well too. well I, I think it's still symbolizes almost as the same thing mm -hmm. i think it just sounds better if you mm -hmm. say it that way um personal protection um private security bodyguard i think bodyguard is like a more normal way for mm -hmm. everybody to understand like regular civilians but mm -hmm. you know once you're in a bodyguard world you know we we seem to say ep Mm -hmm. EP work, uh, yeah, executive. You know, executive protection. That sounds kind of more professional. Um, I noticed that the um, the people that have like, I guess want to say, well, bodyguards. Bodyguards yeah. mostly like they usually. It's kind of hard to say. The bodyguards really feel like those kind of like more like the street cats that say that they're bodyguards and stuff. More uh, more so like you know people that work in a club and mm -hmm. stuff. But the executive protection is people that pretty much have like the experience they went to school or they did some type of trade mm -hmm. to have that label on that you know what i'm saying yeah got you yeah so um do you uh <laughs> i mean i know i i'm i, I pretty much still do it too but i'm kind of like you know more like in the managerial yeah. stages right now mm -hmm. honestly with my company but mm -hmm. um do you get pissed off when people is like oh like you know oh are you just a security guard when you know you're more than that yeah like, i do yeah yeah so i, like, I do so, because so, uh, you know i, I don't it's, it's more than just that because yeah. sometimes they put, I don't even be like to call, be called a security guard. Me neither. Which yeah. is, it's fine. You know, you shouldn't really take that personal because it's still kind of like it's labels on the ignorance, same honestly, thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It yeah. just, they just don't have the knowledge of knowing mm -hmm. what it is. Um, I don't stress people to say, no, no, I'm not a, I'm not a security guard. I'm an executive protect. I don't, I don't do that. No. Yeah. Um, I just tell them, I like, know I work private security. You know, I'm not that person that's on a post. <laughs> opening gates for you or yeah. I'm not um, working at a club you know 
saying, you know, I'm a security, you know, this and that, which is it's fine. I'm not saying nothing against those people, but there's a little bit of a difference, you know. But well, um, I mean, there's there's definitely a difference from people that need to be well, that mm-hmm. need to be cut from a cl- different cloth when it yeah. comes to like being a security guard and being a bodyguard. Yeah. Even though like this day and age, anybody can fucking be a bodyguard, which we're gonna get into later. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that, that's yeah. a whole other conversation. Yeah. I want to jump too quick, mm-hmm. but before we pretty much you know continue, I actually want to start from the beginning mm-hmm. from you um, to really be from make sure you know the audience gets to know get to know you mm-hmm. about your beginnings. You know, before security, oh, sure. before. Or, um, everything and like how you pretty much transition transition okay. into that. Um, it's kind of a weird story. Um, We're all about it. <laughs> well, <laughs> first and foremost, you know, when I went off to college, I was I, I majored in criminal justice, so I did want to be in law enforcement. I tried to follow the path of my father. My father's in law enforcement for thirty years. So once I got out of college, um, I went into law enforcement, mm-hmm. and I did it for a few years. Um, I did not like it. Why is that? Why didn't you? The reason why I did not like it is because there's a lot of politics involved. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you don't see. There's a lot of things. Like, when I got in, I was like 23, 24 years old, like fresh out of college. Um, there's a lot of stuff I saw within the actual organization that I had to turn my head. Things that I didn't understand. Things that we actually complain about to this day, as far as being, well, if you want to say, you know, a black man mm-hmm. and me being black and turning my head the other way mm-hmm. off of um you know some things that i saw personally of course that i just didn't see myself doing it for 20 years do you, you think know? do you think that uh you being especially in the climate that we're living in today mm-hmm. you know rest in peace joy floyd rest in peace rihanna taylor all mm-hmm. of them do you feel like when you were um doing these uh when you were pretty much working like did it kind of like kind of fuck with your integrity a little bit you being a black man being in law enforcement yeah it not was not to paint the picture that everybody well, in law enforcement no, does it, fuck shit but it, like it did to and talk it, about the that the simple reason why it did is because um, well you know I grew up in central Florida I didn't grow up in Miami so I grew up in like more of a country environment so me growing up in like a country environment obviously you know it's like there's, there's a just a handful of black people in the, well, black men that works in the police department. And I was like one of the few. So there was a lot of things that went on as far as like, you know, I seen drugs get planted on people, mm-hmm. turn the other way. I seen people, we pull over, pull people over and harass them. And, you know, I would be the first and just fall back. I wouldn't say nothing. You know what I'm saying? And I guess that gave the people in the streets the cue like, oh, yeah, he's a rookie. Because they would say I wouldn't say now, just look mm-hmm. in the background and mm-hmm. just observe and see what was going on. But I would mm-hmm. see how my field training officer would, would act. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, because you go through five different phases of field training officers. Um, the first one, it was pretty smooth. You know, you just learn the streets and everything like that. The second one ended up being a girl, um, which was, she was, I think she was the best one that trained mm-hmm. me. You know, because, you know, women, they seem they seemed to uh, kind of, are you know they master everything you know yeah, what I'm they, yeah. they push it a little bit further than a guy okay you know? okay and i feel like they they feel like they have to do that mm-hmm. um once i got to the third phase which was the third uh field training officer and that's when the, sh- the shit really got real mm-hmm. i had like a kind of like a uh, like an outcast guy like he was like he got shot at he almost got killed a couple of times really? so he was like above the law so he would we would just ride around and he was the type of person that you know he had the big head, you know what I'm saying? He would walk in the middle of the hood and harass people. And, you know, mm-hmm. I felt kind of comfortable because, you know, and, and at that time I had relatives that, you know, they stayed in the hood. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that kind of bothered me. Um, I tried to wait it out for a whole two years. And after those two years, I was like, nah, man, I can't. This is just not me. You know what I'm saying? I talked to my father. And actually, my father actually had a conversation to, to me about mm-hmm. law enforcement before I got into it. Yeah. And, you know, he didn't want to tell me, like, Exactly, exactly what to say. He was mm-hmm. like, "Yeah, look, man, you're gonna see a lot of stuff that's going on that you're not gonna understand until you get in." Mm. And he's like, "I'm just warning you." So once I got in, and then I started seeing it, and I would confront him about it. He was like, "This is what I was trying to tell you about." So now you know, mm-hmm. you know. And that's when I had the choice of like, you know what, I'm gonna back out. Um, when I got out of that, I did go off and move to um, South Florida. So I went to Miami. And I was still trying to find myself. So I was still kind of like debating, like, okay, let me, let me try to find something else I wanted to do. I didn't really know. You know what I'm saying? I was kind of like venturing off. You know, I, I majored in this, and now I'm out of it. And like, yeah. I don't know what to do now. Um, so I actually had 
Stole were you as big before when you like as No, now, I was been a pretty fit guy. Okay, man, you gotta right, ask cool. my cousin, man. We we <laughs> man, me and my cousin was actually the same size at one point. It was just crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um what happened, always, what happened, Ronald? Man, I, I, <laughs> man, I, I'm joking. I just took off. <laughs> I'm joking. I yeah. took off, man. Um, me, you know, I always train. You know, it's it's a lifestyle of me. I've done that since I was like 14 years old. My father bought me a weight set and everything, and um, you know, my father always worked out. You know, he was in kickboxing and all that stuff and in sports. So I would always be involved in that type of stuff. But anyway, did you play sports back in back in yeah, the day? Yeah, I, I okay, played well, football. Okay. That's how I got a scholarship to go to college. Nice, nice. Um, what college? East Carolina University. Okay. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, East cool, Carolina cool. University. So do you yeah. feel um, that, you know, because I think one of the things that I really, really love about you is mm. like your work ethic, man. And that, that's something I really, really admire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and um, do you think that that work ethic that you pretty much had definitely played into the profession that you're in right now. Absolutely. It definitely helps. Absolutely. I think it go hand in hand with the fitness and the work ethic. Yes. And everything else yes. It, it definitely built a lot of structure. And I think most of it started with, um, with sports. It was football. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, it did talk, teach me a lot of structure. And, um, I feel like life. football definitely teaches a lot of things Discipline. that you yeah. cannot learn anywhere else, especially well, camaraderie, camaraderie, you know what I'm saying? Uh, teamwork, yeah, uh, how to deal with people, how to deal with different, you know, scenarios. Absolutely. I, well, well, I wouldn't just put it in football. I think all sports, because okay. it, when it's, when it's a team, you know, you're all going to come together, even though, you know, the football probably a little bit more brutal, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, you go through a little bit more emotions because mm -hmm. of coordination too, though, if you think about it, well, basketball, coordination, well, everything. Okay, so, think, yeah. so hear me out. So, yeah, so, yeah. so, so since we're already here, the reason mm -hmm. why I say that is because, mm -hmm. you know, I feel like football is one of the only sports that you need 11 men to be on the same pace at the same time. Cause if you're not, it's a false start. You guys get back five yards back and you have to start, start over. Mm -hmm. I can't think of any other sports that you have to have you may that right. type of Yeah, the game is based on inches you know and saying? everything has to be to the T. All the place has to go right. The guard has to go to the right. Mm -hmm. Hit the right tackle to yeah. open the right hole and yeah. the fullback got to hit the linebacker to yep. make the running back be able yep. to cut off that block. And yeah, yeah. It, you know what? It makes sense. Um, so how did you apply that into fitness and getting into that. So, did you did you own a, a fitness business as well, or did you like talk to me about that? Because that's how we're the pretty much you know okay. crazy going well, into. Well, I just um, I'm I'm working on it right now. Um, okay. I just started working on the logo, um, which you know my cousin had kind of sh shot me to like somewhere for a fiver as far as uh, to design and everything yeah. like that. Which I'll show you guys a little bit later. Yeah, there's not a paid sponsor um, by the way, Fiverr, so we can't say your name. We're gonna say it though. Oh yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the fitness part, yeah, the fitness came, it, it comes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, just due to the fact I've been working out at such an early age, it just became a part of the way of my life. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's sometimes, uh, yeah, I might go like two weeks, three weeks off of work that I won't get to work out. Mm -hmm. And I think due to the fact I've been doing it for so long, it kind of messes up my mental. So I feel like that's, it has to, I have to keep doing it. I have to keep doing it over it and goes, over. It goes, it goes hand in hand. Yeah, it goes hand in with hand. With everything, as far as with my job everything. and everything. But especially when it comes to EP. Because, you do have to be in shape. Yeah, because, and okay, so, 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 so talk to me about this. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like a lot of, Maybe not most, but a good part of people who say that in security don't mm. really take their, their health seriously. Well, they don't take the health or they don't take um, the Not the heavy hitters that we know. I'm talking about like for the grand, the, the, the general consensus. Everybody that's that just claiming they that, are a bodyguard. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think they do take it that seriously. I think they, just because you're standing next to someone or you're walking someone in a club or whatever, they feel like that's, the, you know, that they know what they're talking about. Like I always tell people they have to have some type of trade to learn whether it's if it's law enforcement if it's um ep courses or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. i think that you have to do all that stuff to to, to get ahead of, of everything because mm -hmm. i'm not the biggest guy in the game mm -hmm. but i've learned to find angles to get the clients you know what i'm saying okay i would always have something that i would take advantage of like okay marvel okay marvel's a big dude if me and marvel walk in a club and there's just a whole bunch of clients everywhere Potential clients. They're going to look at Marvel. They're not going to pay attention <laughs> to me, dog. They're going to be like, yo, who is this dude walking down here? Like, he's 6'8". Like, this is a big plus, dude. I want plus, plus three, but it's fine. Plus three, you know? <laughs> so I'm like, yo, okay, what can I do to get an angle on Marvel to get these clients to start 
putting the shine on me. So did you, okay, so mm-hmm. it's, I'm, I'm really glad we're here. Mm-hmm. So how tall are you? Like 5'11". So do you feel like, because I know you, like, first of all, your presence, your stature, mm-hmm. pretty much who you are, your nature. Man, bar, six foot. Bar, bar. Scratch that out. There you go. Put there six you go. foot, Dude, you got to do, bro. <laughs> hey, first, scratch that out. Put six foot. Yeah. But, you um, gonna let me, I'm going to lose females. So, so yeah. do, you, do you think that, not because of you, but do you think just because of the general optics mm-hmm. kind of like maybe was a deterrent because of your height? Yeah, because I think that's a big, big ass misconception right now no. in the bodyguard world that mm-hmm. people think because oh, because you're six eleven, oh, because you're seven foot, that you're a fucking killer, or then you know what to do. Listen, no. I know dudes, not mm-hmm. including me, because mm-hmm. you know I I can throw real good hands, mm-hmm. but 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 I know people that are like six seven, six eight, that not, are bodyguards, that don't know and they're fucking t- terrible. They're, they're just more cowards. Of a, they're they're fucking, more of the look. They yeah, it's more the look. Pretty they're much. more of the look. So so did you? Do you still, do you, did you, like, when you first started, like, did you deal with that? Yeah, it was a little bit so of a complication to get in um, because I was battling with actually a guy that's actually taught me the game, which he's six seven. No, he's six nine. Mm-hmm. Um, by the name of uh, Badu, and, you know, I don't know if you know. Badu's my guy. Yo, shout out to Badu, yeah, man. Shout out to yeah. Badu, okay, man. He so taught me the whole he, game. So he was like your mentor, pretty he much. He was my mentor. Really? Yeah, not a lot of people know that, but Badu was my mentor when I first how, stepped how into the game. How old is Badu? How old is Badu? Probably the same age, like 35, 36. Really? Yeah. Dad, Badu's he's about 30. That's crazy. No, no, he's 35, 36. I give him 36. Okay. Um, so how did you guys meet? Like, how did that we happen? We met because we, I had got hired with cash money, and um, I was working for uh, Birdman's brother at the time, Slim, mm-hmm. which is more of the, um, he's more of the executive guy. Got it. He don't be in the clubs and stuff. So when I came along, Badu wasn't there yet. It was just me. When we started moving around a lot, you know, and due to the fact that I was so new to the game, like, honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. That profile of, like, that high profile of a client, I shouldn't have had him at, I shouldn't have had him at that moment because I wasn't ready for him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I should have started, like. Why do, you, why do you think you weren't ready? Like, why, why I had personally? no experience, but just law enforcement. And I'm telling you, I was, the way I was moving, I, I can tell that I, he wasn't, I wasn't moving right. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I stayed along the whole time is, um, this one guy that put me in the game, which is this Colombian guy. His name is um, Carlos, mm-hmm. which is um, Slim's uh, assistant. Um, he saw me one day. I was, I don't know, I think I was probably was working in a club at one point. And uh, he came in and, uh, you know, you cater to them, you know, yeah. you handle whatever they need because he's a customer. Of course. And he liked the way I moved. He knows I move a little bit different. And I think it's part, due to the fact that, you know, law enforcement and football with the discipline and, uh, you know, when you're told to do something, I'm, I do what I'm told. Like, I don't maneuver uh, mm-hmm. over that. Um, well, anyways, he asked me, he was like, if I was, ever, uh, if I was interested in doing that, I said, yeah, sure. He was like, oh, you have a passport. At that time I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I never traveled out the country at that time, but <laughs> shit, I'm all, I'm a whole nother level now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got a passport and stuff, but, um, he put me in and, um, if he wasn't there alongside with me too, with Badu, because Badu wasn't there and wasn't there yet, he pretty much was kind of like guiding me. Got it. Because he saw the potential in me. So, you know, and that's a good thing, man. When people see potential in you, and that's what the way I do it. Like when I see someone that's trying to get Especially into this. Especially people world, who know how to harness it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, some people are pulled into the game and um, they let it get to their head. And at the end of the day, you get burnt. You know what I'm saying? They, that happens on them. But there's some people that I did pull into the game and, and they, they, they flourished very well. Mm-hmm. They, they maneuvered and they excelled. Um, but yeah, so when I got in, Badu came like a month later. And I was still shocked at how big this dude was, dog. Like, Badu's a big nigga, dog. He had to walk a different way because he was so big, I couldn't be seen. You know what I'm saying? So, for the audience, real quick, just Badu 6'9, man. But all muscle. Badu looks looks like a wrestler. (laughs) Yeah. He looks like like the Undertaker. Just put it that much. Yeah, basically. He looks like the Undertaker. So, it was just stupid at that point. I was like, yo, this don't even match right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That dude was um, another level. When we had to move, dog, I had to move certain ways. For and me, where, where, where was this? Where was this, by the way? Like when we first Mi- met? Yeah, was this in Miami? No, or no, where we was, was in New Orleans. Okay, got when it, we first got met. It, got it, okay, and um, but yo, Badu was a very humble dude. So yeah. he took the time. Like there would be times that I would um, I'd be too close to the client. They're talking. He's talking private conversations to whoever he's talking to, and Badu would be like, "Hey man, now you got to back up, back up, back up." You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like close. Because I see just like yeah, thirty yeah, people I hear around you, us, I hear you. and yeah. I, I'm feeling uncomfortable because yeah. I don't want nobody to touch him. He was like, no, 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 you got to know when to come in and then know when to back up. Yeah. So I started learning, and I was with Badu for like almost 
what, a year and a half mm -hmm, side mm -hmm. by side? And there's different type of clients, man, that like that close protection and like the things that's like, hey, like I want to just, I, I, I want to make sure that you're not even here. You know what I'm saying? I can tell you the but, example but of those make clients. Make sure to like answer the call when you're ready. Executive clients are the ones that, that's what you just said. They don't want you to be close. They don't even want you to be seen. They don't even yeah. want to even, they don't want nobody to know they have a bodyguard. Yes. Because I had a client like, they was like, dog, you, I'm at this bar. I want you way over there <laughs> at that table. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, I can't. Yo, how about... nerve wracking is that, by the way? Let me tell you something that was hard for me. <laughs> like... I had one like that, right? We went to New York, right? Okay, so we went to New York. He met up with some lady or whatever. He was like, "Listen, I don't want you no more." I don't like. Listen, now this is when I don't. I don't know New York like that. He said, "I want you to stay a block away." <laughs> Now, you know how many people, now, it's a lot of people in New York, right? You know how crowded it is in yeah, Broadway, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm not 6'9", <laughs> so I can't see over everybody. So I'm a block away, dog, like losing this dude. Like, yeah. I'm to the point where I'm running around the block yeah, and I'm yeah. running across the street so he don't see me. And I'm like, yo, this is, dog, this is crazy right now. I feel like I'm, this is just wild right now. But yeah, yeah. Um, what I noticed, the ones that like him close are the executives. And I noticed that the, the, the hip hop artists or artists in general. Yeah. They like them to be close because, yeah. you know, when you got artists, you know, they're high profile. They know yeah. who they are. As soon as they yeah. see, oh, snap, let me. Yeah, so they the, want you close. The, the, Executive, the higher, they don't know. The higher the profile, especially like with athletes mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. like artists, the closer they definitely want you to be, um, you know. Well, not all of them, though, because I, I not like, all uh, of them. For Kanye, Kanye is a person, like, trust me, like, I've had like my director of security, like, take care of him before. Mm -hmm. And like, bro, like. Kanye was a fucking headache. Like, it was like, awesome. like, nah, man, back up, back up. You're too close, man. You're too close. And he is as high as profile you can pretty much get. I have a, the client that I have right now, he's the exact same way. We were being, um, and like right now, like I've been with him for what, three months now? So I'm still learning him. Mm -hmm. So we were going to the, to the mall. Now, I know when we're in the mall, everybody's everywhere. Mm -hmm. Soon as you like, kind of like let up a little bit, somebody's coming, you know, he don't like that. He's like, nah, man, you back up. You, you too close to me. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, back up. Okay, if somebody grab you, somebody grab you. But yeah. You but just told me is, to back the, up. Yeah. I'm backing up. But another but, thing, another thing too yeah. is, is that a lot of people don't understand that your past does not define like your present and your future. And what I mean by that is mm -hmm. that like, yeah, like, okay, I got you. Like, you're from the hood. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. But like, bro, you're a different beast now, man. You're a different profile. Yeah. So you have to move accordingly. You have to mm. move like, like if you didn't need that, then you wouldn't, we wouldn't have security. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So there's a reason why we, like, we need to pretty much be close to you. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I always have to be close because it's only going to take one incident for that's your it. career to be over. Like, that's the only thing that this career is hard about. Mm -hmm. You're walking on constant eggshells. So it takes that one Talk time. Talk to me about how hard this profession is. This is where we're here. Like, it's not, you know, it's not really how hard, it's just very stressful. Okay, go ahead. And you're constantly stressing um, on fucking up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it does bring out the best in you. Um, when I worked for Little Wayne, I think that brought the best out of me because the way he had everything set up where you don't never talk to him, when you first come to, when you first work with him for the day, you have an itinerary. They give you a list of everything. You got everybody's number. You got the pilot's number. You got the, 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 the manager in New York. If you're flying to New York, you communicating with him in New York. You haven't even left New York. To, you haven't even left Florida yet. Mm -hmm. You have the driver's number. You have to um, set up the Bluetooth, this, this, and that. When he walks, right? When Lil Wayne walks, I think I told my cousin about this. He can't, you cannot you can't keep him from stopping. Oh, you can't, so you can't let's stop. Let's say you're going through live. If he, he's walking, you know how the crowd of live is, right? You're walking through live. Yeah. You can ask Hugo this because Hugo had the same situation course, with him. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen you it. You know, you try to be it. professional. You try not to bump it because you know if you're bumping people, somebody's going to get offended. Yeah. With this dude, you don't give run, a fuck. Dog. Run him over. Run him over. If Marvel's in my way, <laughs> look, run look how, me over. Listen how big Marvel is. If Marvel's in my fucking way and Little Wayne's behind me, sorry, bro. I'm finna, <laughs> bro, I'm finna, I'm finna punch Marvel out the way, dog. And like, Marvel, I'm gonna apologize to you later, dog. I'll explain it later. Dog, I'm telling you, dog, that's how, that's how the stress level is. When you go to the hotel, right? When you go to the hotel with Lil Wayne, we pull up. Yeah. The door has to automatically be open. Yeah. There has to already be a person that has the door open at the, uh, at the hotel. Uh -huh. You need to have a key to the elevator, because and it has to be open already uh -huh. by the time he walks. When he gets into the elevator, no one has to be in there, but you and him, 
it can't stop on no floors. No, y'all better but than me, But that one floor. Y'all better than me. Y'all better so than look, me. So, <laughs> look, my stress level is like, yeah. yo, you, I'm so afraid to make an error. And, you know, we're all human. We all make mistakes. Of course. Bro. So is it like a one and done thing type of thing? Like where like if you make one mistake, like you're fired? Yeah. Really? So when okay. I work with him, I, I kind of like stay kind of like incognito. I try to like work with him and then just get out, you know, work with him a little bit. And then I feel like that pressure. Oh, yeah. Get out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I give props to um, uh, who, who was working for him. He worked for him like two years straight. Bro, there's, there's this big, big dude, man, that White still guy? worked. Huh? Yes. Tim. So yeah, dog. Tim, no, no, Sca- Jim. Scary looking dude. Like, Jim, yeah. Like, Jim. Like he like walks like Jim, this. Jim worked with him for two years, and he, I think he was like one of the best, man. Duh, he gave me the hardest he nap I've ever best. had in my life. He worked with him the longest. I think he was there for two, excuse me, two years with mm-hmm. him. And um, like these are other guys that I learned off of. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys were, were in the game way before me. And I think that's why when I got into the game, I still have that old school mentality of mm-hmm. those guys. Mm-hmm. Because there's a lot of new guys that, you know, there was no social media. So everything that I was doing as far as like doing bodyguard work or slash executive protection, it was like a cult, dog. Yeah. It was like you didn't know how to get in. You didn't know who was in. Uh-huh. But you didn't know what was going on. Um, now that the social media is, which I think is good and bad, social media kind of like you can sell yourself. People yeah. can, people be looking at your page that you never think you're looking, that's looking at your page. I was talking to Ron about that. uh uh-huh. There's people that, you know, it could be like, like, I remember one time I was on looking at my stories and every once in a while you look at who's watching and stuff, you know, you're trying to catch yeah. a female. Like, yeah, 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 of course. And the next thing you know, damn, P. Diddy is looking at my stories. Like, damn, what the hell is he looking at my yeah, stories, yeah, dog? Yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. of who you're protecting. Exactly. Yeah. So it comes hand in hand. So now, yeah. So let's, let, okay. I have, I have a big, big love and hate, love and hate relationship when it comes to bodyguarding with mm-hmm. social media. Here's the love part. Mm-hmm. The love part is, is that you're able to market yourself. You're able to pretty much put yourself in position mm-hmm. into, um, you know, maybe get some other clientele that you mm-hmm. probably can never have. Other people can definitely see who you're pretty much bodyguarding. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's a cool factor. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, is that a liability factor? It can become a liability. So talk to me about that. It can become a liability. Now, the way I have it set up is I go through the photographers of the actual client. So when he's taking, I don't take pictures. I don't take personal pictures. I got you. That's why when you see my pictures different from most of them, I'm not going to say everybody, but for Mm. most guys, when you see me with the client on my page, it shows me I'm on the move working. Mm -hmm. So they're catching me in the move going through the crowd or they're catching me open the door. You're not catching me Side by side, trying to do a fucking catching a Kodak shit. moment. Yeah. No, no, you're not gonna catch me. Those are the ones that kind of messes everything up, and that's when everything gets kind of like meshed and confused. Mm-hmm. But there's you have to learn ways to promote yourself because everybody's on social media, man. So you gotta adapt to it. At first, I wasn't against. I was against it. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna post that stuff. That's not right. So you my never, whole, you never see me when I used to like career, really be. I never used to do it. Yeah, my whole career through cash money, I have nothing to show. Yeah, no, I got nothing you. to show. Though. All I can do is just tell you. Now that it's kind of hard now because now social media, like when I got this other client uh-huh. that I just got, I want to say the manager asked about me and then looked on my social media and mm-hmm. was scrolling to see who I was. Even another person that had a contract of another client that wanted me to work with him, mm-hmm. he went to my page to see what I was doing and see how I moved. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you. that everything comes think, in. Hand. I think it's a difference between having a person to capture the moment than you trying to capture the moment while you're working. Well, there's people out that, there that's, that's, that has There's it, uh, people that do that the latter that be real nasty with it. They, they, and they're really good, too. Yeah. And they're making it work, but I'm yeah. not going to say anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, man, you get it how you live, man. If you yeah. can make it work and you're still getting clients, you're still making money, you do it that way. If Even if everybody's against you, that's why, you know, I'm, I try not to be biased about that stuff. Yeah, I just I do my you. own thing. Make make it work the way I want to make it work because people could be against me on how I do it. Yeah. But like, damn, he's posting like his clients and stuff. I'm like, yeah, I'm posting my clients. But you know what? That shit was on TMZ. I took that picture off of TMZ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just looked up Google. I just Googled yeah. my client and then my picture, my face popped up. And, okay, I'm going to take that picture. And, and, and quite as kept. Yeah, that is a, maybe a kind of liability issue, but mm-hmm. motherfucker, run up if you want to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
like, like, yeah. like you I feel mean, me? Like, like, yeah. like, like, try if you really want to do some, try mean, some bullshit. Then, like, you know, you pretty much writing your own fucking death certificate. If you, if I'm talking about some, some real you know, shit, you, you're always gonna get tried. Don't matter how big you are, or yeah. how much experience in mm-hmm. boxing or MMA that you have. Somebody's gonna try you. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I've learned that. You know, and and, and it happens in the when you least suspect it. Yeah. Talk um, to me about mm-hmm. the battle when it comes to knowing how to fight the battle within basically protecting your clients from an intellectual standpoint and a physical standpoint. When um, do you know when to get physical? Well, when you know it's going to get physical, mm-hmm. you need to take your client away from the environment. Um, that's when you have to keep your composure. I used to have, uh, I used to have a temper. And I used to feel like um, when I have a client and I can see somebody's barking and I'm trying to calm the situation down, but I see that they're barking because they know the client that I have. So they're trying to test me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to knock this nigga out. Just to prove a point. <laughs> Just to prove a point to my client that I'm knocking niggas out. And yeah. prove a point to this dude like, yo, bro, I'm about to give you the business so you you going to know what time it is. <laughs> yeah. And I hope they record it. Um, but I learned that it can escalate to something way worse because mm-hmm. I've passed that. Well, I'm going to tell you this. I've had experience on both ends. And that's why I say you got to learn, take everything as a learning experience. I've had that situation where I could have just got my client and walked away. But I was so irritated by this guy mm-hmm. that I went out of my way yeah. to get this guy. And when I went out of my way to get this guy, it ended up going really bad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It yeah. wasn't happening. It ended up not just being that guy. So yeah. me fighting this one guy ended up being six guys. Yeah. And then when it was six guys, that means... My entourage that I was with, my mm-hmm. client, they jumped in because they saw me fighting six guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, that incident happened, I think that was in Montreal. Really? Canada. Oh, you know, yeah, it was in a weird spot. I didn't think that was going to happen over there. I think yeah. I'm be in New York doing some stuff like no, that. Honestly, kind of like, um, maybe I shouldn't say this or whatever, mm-hmm. but you know, like one of the best feelings, dog, mm-hmm. is like when you get into an altercation mm-hmm. and then like your client jumps in because he fucks you so heavy. Let me tell you, like, I had that happen. <laughs> I had that happen. <laughs> like, it, you know what? And I'm gonna It's t- not a good, it's like, okay, professionally, it's mm-hmm. not a good thing. It's not a good thing. But like, just like from like a man to man to like, yeah, yeah. cause you, re- dog, like with this client, man, you spend like basically like your whole livelihood with this person. Yeah, so like yeah. when they like really fuck with you on that level, that like you're just not just a piece of meat, yeah. but like you're actually like a brother to him. So like, you know, in certain situations, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a story with that. Please one. do, dog. Now we're going back to Montreal because everything seemed to happen in Montreal, <laughs> right? So we're in Montreal, and you know, I have this client. I'm not gonna say the name, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna get who it is mm-hmm. once I explain this the situation. So we're on stage, and you know, my client, you know, during his show, he likes to jump into the into the crowd and surf and do all this, go all the way to the end and come back, right? I'm used to it because we do it at every show, so I always prepare myself, you know. Um, once he starts taking the jury off, okay, he's about to jump. I let all the security staff know at the bottom of the gate of the stage, like, hey, you don't have to go in. I'm going to go in. Just be there when he comes out to put him back on the stage. So I jump in the crowd. And every crowd is different. Mm-hmm. Some crowds are, are, are very, like, happy and just excited. Some crowds are very hostile, bro. Like, when you overseas, that's a different crowd, bro. Yeah. They're not the same crowd yeah. as the U.S. So I jump over. More, you know, more hostile? More hostile, bro. Like, I'll explain that in a little bit. So I jump over, you know, to the crowd and everything like that. You know, he's surfing and everything. So I still try to be professional and try not to push and shove people because, you know, when you're doing that, you know, that could cause problems. Mm-hmm. So I'm, you know, trying to maneuver. If I see somebody's not moving and they don't acknowledge that I'm trying to get by to get to my client, you know, I, I tap them because mm-hmm. they're not going to hear me if I'm talking because everybody's yelling and the music playing. So I tap him. So he'll turn around and look at me to see what's going on. So I, I tap the guy, right? I tap him. He don't move. And I'm looking at my client. He's, he's about to surpass me. So I'm getting, I'm getting kind of uncomfortable. Like, yo, yo, I, I got to go. Move, move, move. So I look. Meanwhile, you got a whole bunch of people around. I got a whole bunch of people around. But I'm like zoned in at this yeah. one guy. Yeah. Because <clears throat> this one guy just, I can get to my client quicker if I get past one guy. So I know that he's talking to this girl, which I don't know how he's talking to this girl in the crowd. <laughs> he's still not acknowledging. And he has his hand like in a, in a position to where I can't get around him. Like even mm-hmm. if I try. Mm-hmm. So me being me. <laughs> I just maneuver this nigga, like embarrass him and the girl, move him and end up running him into the girl and stuff, which I didn't plan to do. But I had to make a decision right yeah, then and there to get yeah. to my client. So I move him. I, I, so I keep going and then I, I feel something like knock me across the head, dog. So I turn around. Once I, bro, once, everything went black. Everything just, <laughs> everything went black. I didn't care who it was. I didn't care what. 
<laughs> so I just started going at the dude, though. I yeah. didn't, what was going on? Yeah. And then once me and this dude starts fighting, right? Um, four, like it was like four or five other guys. Cause I'm starting as I'm going at this guy. Now I'm hearing, I'm feeling shots being hit mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. back of my head, mm -hmm. side of my head. Mm -hmm. Um, luckily I got a strong chin, dog, cause I. I Felt a couple shots in my chin, so what I did, I just laid low, cause you know in the crowd, mm. I laid low and just concentrated on this one guy. But next thing you know, my client starts coming back. He starts surfing back to me. I didn't know that, so he didn't even focus on the show anymore. He just seeing me fighting like a whole bunch of guys. So he's surfing back to me, and next thing you know, he's fighting and. And then I look up, and then I see everybody. The DJ jumps in the crowd. Then I see his homeboys <laughs> jump in the crowd. And then we somehow end up, it led to, like, the, uh, the back of the stage. And uh -huh. once it got to the back of the stage, bro, it was all, it was in. Yeah. Right? We went in after that. Uh, yeah. Everybody was out the way. There was nothing being looked at, no cameras. So yeah. we just went in on that. Yeah. Um, but like I said, I think he ended up losing money because of that, because mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. show was... They turned it off. You know, yeah, they, they, I mean, as shit so got kind of crazy. I could have just left it yeah. alone. I could have just tried to yeah. figure it out. So that was like a lesson learned for me that like, yo, once stuff like that happens, just focus on what you got to do or your clients in the situation, just get him out of the situation. Yeah, I think um, one of the biggest lessons I've learned while doing security or executive protection is just like, like, bro, you have to be able to, like, compartmentalize, man. Like, you have to be able to, like, really just, like, let shit go. Yes. <laughs> like, because that could have been a situation for you where, like, yeah, he hits you, whatever this and that. Okay, I understand. Yeah. You got to defend your honor. Yeah. But, like, you could have just probably just let it go. And then, I like, could have let it go. You could have. You could have. And it could have got worse. But here's, here's another thing, too, though. It, bro, like, see protection is so crazy because like it's such a it's, it's a it's a it's a it's a seesaw battle it's like mm -hmm. a give or take because it's like if you would have let that go then the people around you the crowd around you would think that it's okay to try you like that exactly it's so like, like so when, when yeah exactly so it's like when do you know when to go you don't like, you don't you just have it's to a, make, it's a it's a, situa it's a situational same, thing and, and i think it's the same way far as like in law enforcement even okay. though you know we get these situations because like i told you i've been already been on that other side so i know how they feel in some sense mm -hmm. when things happen, they get that split the second uh, split uh, decision to make a choice whether, okay, am I gonna pull the gun out, mm -hmm. hit this dude because I don't know really really what he has, yeah, or I'm just gonna wait because when I was in academy, they showed two scenarios of that happening. Like one guy didn't pull out because he was hesitating because he was trying to think and do what he was trained to yeah, do, yeah, and he ended up getting killed. And then you got the other scenario where the guy pulled out. Shot him, you know what I'm saying? But end up being, he didn't have nothing on him. But just the whole movement of- mm. He killed it's him? A split he decision killed him? Yeah. Mm. So it's a split decision that you have to make. So some of these, you know, I'm not trying to veer off to that subject and stuff like that. But what I'm saying, as far as being split decisions where you, there's really, you don't know what to do. Like you just have to make that choice and whether you go right or you're going to go left. Yeah. yeah. Figure it out. Yeah, it seems you like got a split decision. Seems uh, like experience yeah. is pretty much the only teacher for That's that. That's the right? only thing. Yeah. So if you end up making that one decision at one time, so uh -huh. now you know. Uh -huh. Just like the story I just told you, like yeah. I would never put myself in that position again because, you know, my client could have, by him fighting, even though he held his own and he was giving everybody else the business, but it could have went bad. He could have yeah. got hurt. He could have got stabbed. He could have yeah. got shot. He could have died because of my <laughs> because of my anger. Shit, both of y'all could have died. Exactly. Honestly, you exactly. Know? So. Everything is based off of experience, and you do have that split decision to uh, second to do mm -hmm. the right thing. So since we're already here right now, um, mm -hmm. I've always wanted to like really understand and get like educated mm -hmm. on the um, the art of like concert security and concert like oh. bodyguarding. <sighs> Because that's a different breed, bro. Like, you got to yes. be made of a different type of fucking cloth. Yeah, are you talking about as far as being a bodyguard going through the concerts? Yes. Okay. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, everything has to be and very organized. dealing with detailed. the type of artist that yeah. does those type of theatrics versus, yeah. you know. So, we, we, let's just put it. Obviously, if it's going to be concert, it's going to be a high-profile client. Um, you're going to have to do an advance before you go there because you need to know all your routes just mm -hmm. in case an emergency happens. Um, I try to find two exit routes that I can get my client out of if anything happens. You know what I'm saying? Um, you, you need to always, when I go there, I always have a group meeting with the security staff that's there at the event because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how beneath you think they are or whatever, mm -hmm. how much, you know, they're low budget or what, it don't matter. 
At the end of the day, man, they help you. I, I, I always get a good rapport with them. Make them feel like they're on the same level as me, that I'm, I'm here with you. We're all a team. No, I'm not just a bodyguard because you get bodyguards can out there that, that does again? that. Can you say that again real quick? That mm-hmm. like you have to pretty much make them feel that we you are at the same fucking level? You are on the because same level. a lot of fucking bodyguards out there that think they fucking... Push and shove to make them feel They, they fucking them. King Tut and shit like that. And they make it harder for themselves because I'm telling you, I've been in situations that like they're not liable to jump in the crowd. Mm-hmm. I've had it to where I've made these guys feel so confident and feel comfortable where I will jump in the crowd and next thing you know I turn around three of them are with me mm-hmm. they don't have to do that because that shit just gets stupid in there I'm yeah. like no I said you don't have to come man next thing I feel something on like right behind me tugging me like oh damn these dudes these niggas is with me made everything so much better yeah you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah um, but yeah that's the key thing that you have to do you, you just have to have everything very organized Every question that your client has for about the venue, you have to have the answer, man. So you have to, whoever is running the venue, you need to stay intact with him. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. need to know all the security gates, um, have conversations where when your client comes, they don't have to sit there and wait. Mm-hmm. You notify them. That's the only thing. Once your client is there, everything pretty much goes smooth. You kind of like start clicking. If you did the advance correctly then you're before, fine. before they got there, everything just goes smooth. Everything goes smooth. I got you. Uh, what is your, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, this is definitely going to give it away, but mm-hmm. like, what is your initial reaction with a certain client when they go from the third floor and then jumps into the crowd? Like, like how, I haven't had that experience, you, man. I, um, how do you feel? <laughs> you man, never had that experience? I never had that experience. Oh, man, really? I thought with a certain artist, like he's done that before. I've never seen it. Oh shit. Yeah, you're right. Damn. Shit <laughs> happened. Yeah, that's you know it became so common. Yeah, like it's, <laughs> it doesn't register no more. It's just like I didn't even think of the floors no more. Yeah, um, yeah. Cause I, I, I'm, shit like, is I, crazy, I, I've dog. I've seen like, it, dog. I this, see, like, this what made it more crazy. I'm gonna tell you this. This is what made it crazy. If this person walked up the stairs, like came out of the second, the first floor, right, uh-huh. going through the crowd, and you know you got a stairway to go to the second floor. If he went up the stairs, it'll be okay. But for some reason, he finds a way to climb. Climb. Like. I can't climb because they're not going to hold me. They're looking at him. So they're helping him go up there. So once I see that, mm-hmm. I have to readjust, go through the crowd to go upstairs, up the stairway, then get back to him before he gets over the ledge, before they surround him. Yeah. You, get, you definitely got to have your cardio up. I'm telling you, when I first started doing that crowd stuff, What's I was... What applies winded. to what we were talking about before, yeah. like the whole fitness thing. You, de- you about have that. to work on your breath yeah. control because yeah. I've had people that jumped in the crowd with me that didn't know any better and they kind of like panicked. Mm-hmm. They panicked. They couldn't breathe because when you... When we were overseas, right, it was like 10,000. 10,000, 15,000 people in the crowd. I remember when we had one, I think it was like 30. You couldn't even... When you go into that crowd, and you got you to think, they're barricaded in. Yeah, got So it's you. like compact. Got you, got you. Once I seen people passing out, like, over, and every 10 seconds, there was a person being pulled out of the crowd. This is when we were in, uh, I think we were in London. Okay. I'm like, God, and so I'm getting, I'm sweating, like, mm-hmm. oh, this shit's going to be bad. Um, it was so packed. I swear, when I jumped in, first of all, when I jumped, I couldn't even go in there all the way. It was like I was, mm. I slowly was sliding in the, uh, in the, in the crowd because it was yeah, so packed. Yeah, I got you. The heat, dog, the oxygen just stopped. Yeah. I felt no oxygen. My shoes were gone because everybody, feet was together, so I had boots on. So once I got my foot out, shoe was gone. Mm-hmm. I couldn't even, li- I couldn't even reach down to get it. I remember one time um, there was a girl and I feel bad. Uh, hopefully she sees this, and I, I want to say I'm sorry. But, um, you know, when you jump over the rail, right? Mm-hmm. You go, there was a girl. And when it's a crowd that's really compact, and if it's like thousands of people, you, you, you end up stepping on people. Uh, you know oh, what I'm so saying? you stepped on her? You try to step. Yeah, bro. I mean, so, she, no, she shouldn't have been there, no, though. No, 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 no. But like, usually when you step, they, they feel your foot coming down, and yeah. they kind of like your foot goes down, and you come in. But it was so packed that she could not maneuver. So I, when I step, I end up stepping on her head. And as I stepped on her head, her body went all the way down. I didn't even see her get back up, dog. Like, it's like she disappeared. Like, <laughs> yo, I, I hope they took her out of the damn Listen, like, listen, listen, listen. In those situations. Disappeared. Situa- listen, listen. <laughs> uh, ma'am, whoever you are, I, I hope, hope she's still that, alive. I hope you're okay. God bless it's all, you know what I'm saying, for God real. But, her, like, man. in those situations, man, you ain't got no time to be worried no, about I don't, motherfuckers. Dog. Like, no, I don't. like, for real. But, um, yeah, that, it, you know, it's. 
every time I jump into the crowd, it's never the same situation. Really? It's it always changes. different. You jump into a crowd and it's all women and everything just goes smooth. You're, you, you know, the, and it's like you got to pick pocket. You can't just walk through it. Mm. You have to pick little pockets that yeah. are open. Yeah. You see which kind of yeah. which kind of goes into mm. the um mm -hmm. uh, a parallel like in the club as well too. I feel like we probably maybe like you definitely learn how to maneuver through crowds of in course. a small scale, yeah, small yeah, level yeah, yeah. in like live and story and everywhere else too because like you can't just like run over motherfuckers. Like you mm -hmm. have to be able to pick pockets and yeah. know how to maneuver and like slide people over and all that and kind of tap them on the on the hip so they can pretty much move and all that. Like mm. that is an art right there that a lot of bodyguards well, I feel like do not have. Have. One one security staff I could definitely and my cousin has to he has to agree on this that I gotta give props to to this day because I still never seen a club security staff like that is live. Yeah. The no, way live, they orchestrate live, and have live, everything organized live, when you, is a, oh, they is set it up tissue. to where you can easily move through the crowd because everybody works as a team and they mm -hmm. do the whether you're the lowest of the totem pole yep. to the highest. Yep. Everybody works as a team. And I, to this day, when I go in there, when I just walk in, I have a client. And next thing you know, I'm looking, they guiding yeah. me this way. It's and a I machine, this guy, man. Guy, they, they work like a fucking other clubs machine. Like that. Yeah. Everybody, like these other clubs, everybody's for themselves, mm -hmm. you know. But, um, yeah, bro. Yeah. So good. Like, definitely, man. Um, it's such a good feeling, man. Mm. Like whenever, like you're doing a job for a client, or whatever, you definitely have the backup. You know what I'm saying? The backup, basically, oh, from, it's, like, it's, you know, from like club security. You know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of times, especially for me, um, not to like to my own horn or anything, mm -hmm. but like I've been in a situation before, maybe like 20 percent out of like 100 percent of the mm -hmm. times, where like I felt like I was pretty much by myself, and because of the type of person I am taking care of, yeah, and the type of money I'm pretty much getting is like, oh man, you know what? Fuck that dude. Like he's he's like whatever. Like you know what I'm saying? Like like I don't need to fucking like look at, look after him, but the 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 I, I would say I got some for that right. I, I would say the uh, the best thing, man, is to have the relationship. If you are a bodyguard, to have the relationship with the uh, security of the club, because a lot of people don't know. Get this, bro, is that they don't have to fucking let you let you rock. Let me tell you something. Let me <laughs> like, tell you something. This is what I do. All right, I'm I'm gonna give somebody. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop a mental a mental jewel real quick on everybody. And this is for the, um, the newcomer bodyguards or uh, executive protection. When you're working with, let's say, like you're, you go into a club, right, to do an advance, all right? Your client's going to be coming in like an hour to, to do a hosting or whatever. Look, they don't have to help you. You know what I do? They really do the fact you that I make, Listen, do the fact, okay, if I make 500, 6, 700 mm. a night off of this one client, yeah. brother, you think I'm not going to take $100 off of that Talk, and take bro. care of, listen, I take $100, maybe 200 because I'm still good with 500 I will break everybody off. Security tips. And Security. you will be surprised how everything goes smooth that you don't have to do nothing. Money talks, dog. And like I said, sometimes, <laughs> but if you want to play that greedy route, and you want to keep it all to yourself, and you know you just want to go in there. You do your advance. You don't really get to know everybody, how everybody moves, and how they feel about mm -hmm. you. Because I look, I believe in energy. If you don't feel the energy's right, mm -hmm. make the energy right. Yeah. If, if you feel like you know they feel some type of way because you're a bodyguard, make them feel like they're on the same level as you. And that's mm -hmm. what I do. And that's why when I work, I f everything flows with me. That's why I get along with everybody. Whatever clubs I go to, it's the same thing for you too. He may not look like he may get along with everybody, but he does. <laughs> I do, man. That is his job. No, like, I'm, a, I'm a gentle like, guy. Like, you yeah. know, I, I don't portray because I don't really talk much, mm -hmm. which, you know, I'm still learning. Well, that's, far why, as, that's why we're here. Know. So, you know, but yeah, that's, that's one mental drill that these new bodyguards, they need to learn that. If you're making the money, you're making this $100,000 a year or whatever, and you can't break off $200. And somebody taught me that. Mm -hmm. I didn't learn that on myself. Mm -hmm. And, um... I learned that honestly through like working that story. Basically, I learned that like, through yeah. an actual agency, man. And I'm, you know, I'm gonna give them a shout out. I learned that through. No, I'm not even gonna give. No, nah, I'm not even gonna say nothing because I don't know what that done to backlash, like backlash on me. And plus, but they I, ain't paying for yeah, this. Yeah, they ain't right? paying for yeah, that anyways. Exactly, man. But I did learn from working with a certain company. Um, he, you know, I would sit there and I would talk to the owner, and he would talk to me and like, you know, he kept saying like, you know, I take care of everybody. You know, at the end of the night, I'm like, what do you mean? I was like, no, you know. You know, these guys work with us hand in hand. And he, that's what he told me. He's like, yo, things will work a lot smoother mm -hmm. if you just give a little. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt you. You not, know what I'm saying? It's not. It's, it's not, not going to hurt you, bro. 50, whatever, whatever it is, it's not going to hurt you. Whether it's the waitress, bro, and, and then the, to keep the, her on point, 
Everything counts. You'd be surprised how yeah. everybody. The doors stays. just open for you, bro. When you be yeah. tipping like security guards, for, you know what I'm saying? Like literally, like just like metaphysically speaking, like it's mm-hmm. just things mm-hmm. just just open up for you, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then yeah. like God forbid if you get into like a, like a, into a situation, they can be right there with you. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, exactly. And that and that's just pretty much one way to like really like keep your your face clean, man. Like in always. That industry, you know what I'm saying? Always, man. I think honestly, since we're pretty much at gyms right now, let's go ahead. I think one of the biggest things that we need to talk about right now, honestly. Honestly, we kind of like alluded to in the beginning mm. is um to fucking stand your ground when it comes to like charging, bro. Like I think like right now we live in this day and age where like just okay. every single buddy, every single fucking bodyguard yeah. just try to get like any type of job for two that two hundred dollars, three hundred dollars, four hundred dollars. Where like they try to like you know undercut like other yeah, bodyguards, we definitely, and they don't yeah. get that they're fucking up the whole entire industry. And the thing about that is. I- we definitely need to form a union or something, but I, I, I think um, I'm down for it. I, I think the social media plays a big part on that mm-hmm. too, as well, okay. because when the so before the social media came, nobody really knew the money that was being made. Mm. Due to the fact that this social media has exploited it, and you know, it, even me as well, as far as the things I post, they're seeing where I'm at. They're like, damn, this dude is driving a Bentley. His client's Bentley. Okay, damn, he's driving his. Uh, McLaren, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he's in a jet. He's okay. So they're automatically looking of of, of your status. So even people that are not mm-hmm. qualified to be bodyguards, they're doing anything to become one. Yeah. Whether they do a two hundred dollar day job where they can just find a regular job and make that shit, work a one job and make a hundred dollars, and then find yeah. another hustle to make yeah. the other hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you do the math and you're making two hundred, two fifty, three hundred, maybe even four hundred, dog. If you do the math mm-hmm. of working for a client for a whole day, it's still not enough. Yeah, got you. You know what I'm saying? It's still not enough. But um, that's what's messing everything up. All these new guys are coming and they're trying anything to get into the game because it's not easy to get in. It's it's no application that you can fill out. It's no that. Even if you're big or not, it's, it's, it's certain barriers that you have to pass. You have mm-hmm. to know somebody. I could not get in. You know who I tried to get in through at, when I first came in? Who's that? My boy, Hugo. Okay. And my boy, Hugo. Shout was, out to Hugo. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to Hugo. But Hugo, Hugo, he let me know what time it is. He's like, bro, you can't just get in just like that. Yeah, true. He, he let me know. He's like, no, it's hard. Because Hugo was in before I was. He was like, no, bro, it's, it's really hard. Like, you, you, you have to, you got to make some moves. You got to mm-hmm. learn some things. Like, network a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And everybody doesn't want to throw their face out on beginners. You know what I'm saying? And that's what people, I get that all the time on social media. Random people trying to get in. I'm like, bro, I don't don't really know you. I'm going to put somebody I know personally, you know, on that I can trust. And I know his personality before I just. Bodyguarding is such an interpersonal industry, bro. This is a shout out for social media. And the guys that are not in the game yet, do not text experienced bodyguards that's already in the game mm-hmm. on trying to get in. Now, if you want to question how to work on getting in, that's different. Okay. But do not ask for somebody to put you on and stuff like that. That's a that's definitely a no-do. That's a yeah. bad look yeah. on your part. So you think if people do that, then like people, like you'll get blackballed? You won't get blackballed, but you will... It's a stain. It's a stain. Yeah, it's okay. a stain. Blackball is, is, is something worse than that. You know, that if you're not in the game, you can't get blackballed to get out. What, um... You know, what can you do? To get blackballed? Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Stealing someone's client will tarnish you for life. Yes. Like, this is, like, it, the, bodyguard, the bodyguard world is such a small world because you're going to see the same people over and over. Mm-hmm. You see the same bodyguards over and over to the point where when you see the same bodyguards over and over, the same clients see you over and over. Like, for example, I don't know how many times I saw Drake, like, from the beginning when mm-hmm. I first started. hmm I saw Drake on the regular. When I was traveling, going around the world and stuff like that, I would run into Drake. Boom, I'd run into Drake. Drake didn't know who I was. But then by the fifth or sixth year, and he's like, damn, this dude is still... Yeah. What's up, Kevin? Like, oh, shit, this nigga, man. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, yeah. They start, then they start, a while. They start shaking while. your hand because like, yeah. they know that, okay, he's been in this circle for a yeah. while, so he must be doing something right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's the thing, though. It's just such a small circle that it's, it's, it, they make it very complicated to get in, but you just got to figure it out. You know what I'm saying? I, t- I always tell uh, these beginners that's not in yet, like, yo, promote yourself. Mm-hmm. Figure out a way to promote you. Give cards. 
time that you have off, if this is a business that you want to do, yeah, yo, go chill at the club. And also, that's another thing too. Mm-hmm. Man, oh my god, the club is it's a, it's a it's a whirlwind of like just marketing, hot like, spot, hot spot for anything. Honestly, not hot just spot. security for any type of business you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would also say for um that what I've done like when I first started cause right now um with my company, you know, what I'm saying I'm in the concierge business. I have mm-hmm. a bodyguard division. We, you know, pretty much everybody knows that. But um, for me, when I just was just doing security, like bodyguarding, like mm. I learned like how to say no to clients. I think that is something that bodyguards in the beginning need to really, really yes. just suck it up, bro. Because the reason why I say this mm. is because, especially when it comes to the transition into, you know, really elevating your pay. Mm-hmm. And, okay, you're talking about the pay. Yeah, thing. that's what I'm talking okay. about. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And um, making sure that, you know, if okay, you want to get like a job for like, you know, 500 a day, but you mm-hmm. usually get 300, but then like you have that other client, you know what I'm saying, that wants to get you for 300, but you know your value. You have to be able to stand your ground and be like, hey, I'm not doing Hurt this a little much. Bit. Yeah, yeah, bro, you have to. And you got, and listen, man, at the end of the day, what do I always tell people? You got to teach people how to treat you at the end of the day. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And, by and, you- and you got to be able to learn. You got to be able to learn how to lose clients. Or, or, I had to do that for a while. That, huh? I had to do that for yeah. a while. And what it does, it uh, it pretty much weeds out that shit. Mm-hmm. It weeds out those type mm-hmm. of clients. And then you'll be able to build like a a, a reputation to where they will know like, too. oh, don't, if you got to come with this type of money if you want to holler at this dude. Mm-hmm. Instead of like, you know, you get that one person that takes the 300. Yeah. Word goes around real quick. Because they're going to ask about, before mm-hmm. they approach you, <laughs> they're going to ask about you and they ain't going to ask that person how much is he charged? Yeah. And if yeah. it happens to be that person that said 300, that you work for 300, that's going to be your fucking price for a long Forever. time. Forever. Until you weed that shit out. <laughs> yeah. And, no, no, and it takes a while to build that up mm-hmm. because I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes people do whatever they have to do to get in. Now, when I worked for Cash Money, I wasn't making bread like that. Mm-hmm. I had to do whatever I had to do. I, got in, I took a huge loss. Like, it was, it was pretty fucking rough, dog. You know what I'm saying? I, and when I think about it now, I was like, damn, dog, I was... Really not making no fucking money like I thought I was. You know what I'm saying? But then when you learn the business and you learn, you know, about your insurance and everything like that, you learn how to rate yourself. But plus, as you go higher in the ranks and you work with more clients, your price tag goes up. You know what I'm saying? Where you can sit there and talk about what you've already done of who you worked with. And that person may have never been touched. You may have never got into no incidents with that person. Yeah. And it could be a person that always get into incidents. You know what I'm saying? Always get into situations. But when that person with you, not, he never gets scratched. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can promote yourself. So sometimes it, it has pros and cons. Mm-hmm. People that's trying to get into the game that tries to throw 700 on the freaking table, 500 on the table, they may not be able to get that. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have to sit there and they got to lower their value a little bit just to get their foot in the door to open up the door because I'm not going to lie to you guys I had to do that that was my only way got I you. came and I made I came in a low because I didn't know the rates at that moment uh-huh. at first too got you got you but when you learn that's when you start mm-hmm. doing it mm-hmm. I got you I got you so how do you uh, so how do you give some what advice would you give somebody that's starting off like you know pretty much like how to price yourself you uh, know, like because like, I think well, they, well there's different tiers honestly when it comes to like you know yeah. day race when it comes to night race and, when it comes to security in yeah. uh, a concert when it comes to high profile low profile so you just kind of like, just give like a gist from your personal experience um, well that's when I say you gotta have some trades you have to uh, take some courses and stuff you know when you have either law enforcement um, you have uh, any type of pro you didn't have to be pro, but like amateur or even pro fighting background, um, that plays a big part. Uh, you gotta be able to like I say one thing. You have to sell say, yourself. That too, but I will also say that you know you have to be able to like really um, be able to like always be a teacher in the craft. You know what I'm saying? Like you're not gonna just know everything and just stop at just. You Listen, know what I'm saying? I've been in this dunk for eight years. I still learn. I'm still learning. Talk so, about it. Um, Who's the guy that um that does the classes all over the U.S.? Um, his name is oh um oh Jesus Icon yeah okay now he's been in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, we pretty much be getting the same caliber of clients, but I'm still willing to learn more because I see that what his what his courses there's still stuff I don't know. You know, I, I looked at a little bit of things that he was doing. I'm like, damn, I didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? And that caught my eye. I'm always uh, have room for higher learning. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It it just levels it just over levels your game on everybody. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I tell people: just to keep learning, keep learning, keep learning. Because 
this game is evolving. Yeah. And like I said, all these old dinosaur guys, because when I came in, it felt like the way it is now, it, I feel like I'm like an old dinosaur guy. But listen, if it wasn't for, if it wasn't for my cousin dog to keep me updated on social media and learning mm-hmm. everything, mm-hmm. I probably would have died out. Yeah. Because I, I have you. guys that I've came into the game with that before the social media and everything like that, they died out because they couldn't evolve. Yeah. And that's what I tell you. Like, you can't use social media as a bad thing because it's just evolving. That's just the way everything is. It's very subjective at the same time, mm-hmm. too. Like, for people who think that, you know, like, for a bodyguard to use yeah. social media, that's just the person that's just maybe that's just jealous as hell. I want to say another thing. I want to give a <laughs> shout out. You know, my go, ahead, go, shout ahead, out. go ahead. Yeah. You know this guy, too, because you told me he was your mentor. I want to give a shout out to Shamir. Oh, absolutely. Shout because out Because he was actually... Another mentor for me, as far as I met him when he was beginning in uh, his business, which he's very successful in right now. Um, one thing he taught me was how to promote yourself, how to advertise yourself. Because God, he is a fucking wizard. He's a monster with that. <laughs> At first, yeah. I was thinking like, "Yo, this yeah. dude's crazy with it. Yeah. flip flops with yeah. shadow group on him. Yeah. This dude tripping." Yeah, yeah. man. Listen, yeah, he you. made his name. Listen, bro, he made his name so big. I would be in. I, I would be out of the country. Mm-hmm. I think I was in like. Um, I think it was in fucking Dubai. I'm walking in the, in the in, I don't have nothing that says shadow group on me, dog. I'm walking through the airport. Somebody stops me. Hey, do you work for shadow group? What the fuck? Yeah, bro. In Dubai? Yeah. No, man. Yeah, Come it on, works. Man. Like, it works. No, dog, it works. <laughs> across the world. That's in a random yeah. spot. Yeah, exactly. I didn't understand if it was like New York or yeah. LA, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Maybe turn around, you know, maybe Canada. A man made island. I went across the fucking country, dog. A man made island across the world, <laughs> bro. A man made island. And that, that yeah. taught me something. Like, yo, this dude has elevated. Yeah. And I think like, a lot. A lot of people went against him, but by the way he was doing it, but the way he do it, that shit works. Yeah. That shit works, dog. You know what I'm saying? I got my hands up. Man, hands up to that man. Nah, you know what I'm he it, did a really good job in that, dog, because he was going against the grain as far as the whole. He's the, like a pioneer. I feel like he is the pioneer. Mike, mar- he is the pioneer. Mar- pioneer as marketing far as the marketing. And, uh, marketing of security, marketing think, security, yeah, and as far as like wearing your brand and your label. Because one thing he did say, man, I was like, damn, this dude's right. We make, we do make good money. We make a lot of money. Yeah, but you know, it came to a point. I hate, I, I hated being that dull, all black in the background. You know what I'm saying? You know, they don't, they don't know who you are. They're not saying you're trying to get noticed or anything uh-huh. like that. But as far as, he did it like with class. Mm-hmm. Like he would show that he had his logos, this and that, where he was just known. Like he just, everybody knew who he was, dog. And I, bro, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. In the beginning, I thought he was, I was like, dog, bro. Because like, I was still set in the mind of the old school way of, no, you just we're all black. You just do your job. You just mm-hmm. do this. And he elevated it, man. So, dog, yeah. I give much props to him, dog. Absolutely. Um, let's take a turn real quick because um, mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely been like a you know, dope ass conversation. Mm-hmm. But um, man, so one of the one of the times I've actually had, honestly, when I used to, you know, dating oh, <laughs> while you're in, the, in, in the industry, you know, oh, man. Um, and, you know, I was dealing with a particular um, a woman at the time, probably mm-hmm. maybe like five, maybe six years, six, six years ago. Mm-hmm. And. At that time, I was just a bodyguard. I wasn't like, you know, doing what I am mm-hmm. doing now. And um, she said she couldn't date me. And then she said that, yeah, the reason why I can't date you is because I cannot take the, the heartache of me not knowing if you're going to come home or not tonight. And I feel like that's, that's, that's the, the darkness of this industry that people don't really even talk about. I feel like the possibility of not coming home. You know, yeah, I mean, I think in the dating world it is very, or just in general, you know what I'm saying? Because I know no, you got you got kids. You well, know what I'm saying? Like, you no, know. that's that's a that's a really good, it's a really good topic. Yeah, because I did have experience of, of I was in a relationship the whole eight years that I was in this career, and I saw how that relationship went into a turmoil due to the fact that me always being gone, mm-hmm. being into these situations. Um, trust plays a big part too, for your behalf and for hers. You know what I'm saying? Because when you're out of sight, out of mind, and you know, everybody likes affection. Even the guy, you know what I'm saying? We we want affection. You know, we want a woman. You know, we're gone for two months. We started yearning for a woman. You know, and for women, they're 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 more in emotions. They want to you know have a guy there, you know, to talk to and stuff. And sometimes I'm across the world, eight hours behind, ten hours in another whole time zone. Yeah. And when I call that person, they're already asleep. And then when they call me, I'm asleep. You know what I'm saying? So, um, 
you're, you're pretty much living the life of the actual celebrity that you're with or the client that you're with or whatever. And due to the fact you're living that life, that comes with it. And if you look at celebrities, their relationships don't last either. Yeah. So I sure. look at it as, as like a parallel. You're in the same lifestyle. So you're going through the same situations that they're going through mm-hmm. over and over. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you may, if you're that guy that, you know, these celebrities have all these women all across the, 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 the world or whatever. And then you, you, you're in that life that you can't control that, that you're doing the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's hard. It's hard to stay committed. It's hard to stay faithful on both ends. You know what I'm saying? Because you, it's, you, you're lacking something in a relationship that, that you're not getting. What about maintaining that relationship with your, with your kids? Like how, how, kids how, is, is, I know your very, kids are a little older, right? I've, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to tell you like this, Doug, I, I sacrificed a lot. Like mm-hmm. I sacrificed a lot. And I think that I came to a point where I want to find another avenue like, for example, like how Shamir has all these guys out there and he can, I see he's found a way. He's finding, he's, he's, just he's living more, life now. He's living, living life now. Yeah. So yeah. now my whole objective is to live the life now because I, I see that I missed a lot. I missed uh, my son's birth, being on a um, tour that I never can get back, which I think that did play a big part as far as, when you think about Kodak, Kodak moments when you're with your, your, your significant other, um, that plays a big part, dog. When you don't have no history, you don't have no, no, um, no past history. You know, when I yeah, look at this yeah. relationship that I was in, we had nothing. I couldn't take her. I couldn't take her out. I couldn't, I'm traveling the world and so busy and gone, I couldn't even do that for her. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't even do that for that person because I was gone all the time. You know what I'm saying? It, it's, 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 a, it's a sacrifice, man. Like you, you, you're not going to really, it's hard to find a woman that can, that can understand that, mm-hmm. especially in this day and age, you know, you know, women, you know, they, they evolve too. Yeah, this course, is not the mom and pop days where, you know, they, you got that grandmother, you know, wife that rides for you. You can be yeah. gone for two no, years. Of course, of course, of like course. You, like no, these no, women, like different. you can't even go to the army now. no more. Yeah. <laughs> these women ain't so, going to wait for you for a whole so, six, eight months in the so, freaking training. So my, so my, <laughs> qu- don't work. so my question to you is this then, if, if, if there's so much sacrifice mm-hmm. in this, right, with your kids, mm-hmm. with your family, with mm-hmm. your friends, with your loved ones, everything else too, then why? Why do it? Yeah. If it's a passion that you do have, that's just like the same thing. Well, as I'm far asking as you. I'm asking you personally. Like, why do you do Yes. Because I, I do have uh, a plan. Like I said, no, I'm trying to set up. I've been in this game so far. Now, when I first got into the game, I didn't know mm-hmm. the sacrifice. Nobody told me the sacrifice of how this was going to be. Of, of things that you're going to lose. You're going to think, you're going to lose your, like, look, I'm, let me give you an example. And, and we're going to make this into like a little personal thing, but it's, I don't care. Now, look, the relationship, I'm not in that no more. Uh-huh. That it's, it, we, she grew apart, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't there enough. I do have a kid from that person, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? The thing that hurt, it hurts the most is the fact that you got to sit there. Now, all the stuff that you wanted to do that you should have done Take that person out. Take that person out of dinner. Take that person on vacation. I am, now I'm watching this other person do it. That I, what I should have done. Yeah. Now, okay, that's a lesson learned. You learn from the next relationship, mm-hmm. all right? Okay. So now I've, I've learned that. Now we're talking about the kids. Your kids, your kids are young. They're like sponges. Everything that you do every day, you're molding them. So my, by me not being there, I'm not molding him correctly like, as a father should be there. Okay. So it's hard. So when I come home, I'm 100% on my kids. Like, I've, I've, I'm off today for the next two weeks. I'm picking them up right after this. You know what I'm saying? Picking both my kids up right after this. I've learned that you, you, have, to, you have to just figure it out, man. It, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard. I, I see every, every bodyguard that has kids or that's married, they're in the same situation. It doesn't last, or I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any of them last yet. You know what I'm saying? I haven't seen not not one, not one last. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a huge sacrifice. The money is good. You know, you you can you can live the high life. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not gonna lie now. Like now, I'm starting to live. Like now, I don't. My price done went up. You know, I'm mm-hmm. starting. I'm, now I'm starting to live a, a, a life that I wanted to live. Of course. But I sacrificed everything. The I'm life not in you, a relationship. Okay, yeah. I got the condo now. I'm, I'm enjoying life. I'm going out and do yeah. this. But my kids are not here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're in a whole family, another lifestyle that, that that's what I wanted. So it's a, it's a, if you think it's worth that, yeah. you know, you may find the person that, that, that will ride for you the whole way. 
But like I said, uh, you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. My son, my daughter's more mentally strong. She's older. But my son is the one who took it the hardest yeah, because the you. fact that, you know, there's another guy around him now, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And he asks for me. He's looking for me. He's looking for me. Daddy, when you coming home? When you coming home? Mm -hmm. I, I'll be home in two weeks. You know what I'm saying? But this guy is around all the time. So he, he has to start giving in to that guy. Yeah, I got you. I, Which got you. I don't hold it against the guy, dog. You know what I'm saying? Because he's just doing his part. Mm -hmm. So that's a sacrifice that you got to be willing to live with if it doesn't pan out as far as the relationship. Yeah, things, um, just like anything in life, uh, you know, things are not permanent. You know what I'm saying? Things are not permanent. Things absolutely. are not permanent. And um, the things that, like, just like anything in life, honestly, you know what I'm saying? You just got to use it as like a, a, a learning mechanism into mm -hmm. really building um what you really want in life so it's funny because like i really i kind of really thought about this now like security especially if you really want to make that profession mm -hmm. into a long lasting profession because you can't bodyguard all your life that's the no one. man you will fucking I'm, I'm die at my, I'm like, at my you, last you would, yeah this. yeah you know what i'm saying but like what you can last do lady. is it's kind of like with what um i know a couple people in security you know like the people who really really flourish in this company in, in this industry if they know what to do with it you know what i'm saying like me like you know i worked that story for three to four years then i took my clients basically then i did a whole private uh security mm -hmm. thing then i built my own like you know agency with that and i have four, four or five bodyguards mm -hmm. that i turned into that into a concierge company like you have to be able to really have that foresight. Be like, you know what? Like, shit, shit, like, shit sucks ass right now. Like, I know when you worked back back then, you were like, yo, shit sucks fucking ass right now. Yeah, but I'm doing this right now in order to pretty much set myself up, exactly. you know, for the future. Exactly. And definitely due to the fact that this whole combat thing, everything just definitely slowed down drastically. So you definitely got to make strategic moves. Yeah, right COVID, now. COVID definitely, uh, yeah, you know, I, I, I feel you on it, that. It definitely, like, altered my situation far as clients and being able to, you know, dealing with shit that I normally don't deal with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like just swallowing pride and all this shit and getting into situations where I can go to fucking prison. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And just doing it because, damn, I know I'm going to make this 10000 at the end of the month. Like, right, let me just hang on two more weeks and I'm mm -hmm, good. Mm -hmm. Situations like that, dog, and sometimes it's not worth it, but, you know, I'm just trying to set things up as far as business-wise. Like, like I said, I'm in the last leg of my whole bodyguard thing. Um, I enjoyed it. It was a a great journey, you know what I'm saying? I met a lot of people um, throughout the world, but like I feel like I'm merging to something different. Mm -hmm. that so, I, since we're since we're here now, yeah. um, because we're pretty much about to wrap up. Um, mm -hmm. so what are you into right now that you're pretty much transitioning into? Transitioning? Well, I'm still going to be in the security field, cool. but I want to do it to where I do more contracts, as far as like venues, like you was doing. Mm -hmm. But I want to do like multiple. Well, everybody wants to do multiple ones, and yeah. far as um. Uh, residential, you make a lot of money for yeah, us. If you too. get contracts it's in residential, too, it was a 24-hour service. Yeah. You making money when you sleep. That's mm -hmm. all I'm saying. Yeah, I want to do that, and I also want to. Um, I want to open up like a, a gym, but you know, obviously, you know, you're not going to be able to. You know, you got to compete with elevation and all this. Yeah. But I've noticed yeah. that these there's these gyms that just remember what's the name? Uh, what's the name? Sheldon. More advanced than that, but far as like having it to where you provide a facility for. Um, personal trainers. Okay. So my plan right now, well, I don't want to say it because somebody going to steal that shit. Yeah, man. So keep I'm that just shit, gonna say, keep, look, keep that shit man. cold tuck, man. I got a plan. I'll tell y'all off the mic, man, but yeah. uh, I don't want nobody to take that shit, bro. Because <laughs> really, that's really a plan I got. I got that shit wrote down, yeah. but, you know, I, I just work on that one. Yeah, man. Nah, this has definitely been great, man. Um, long time fucking coming. Absolutely, and, uh, man. I, Absolutely, I, man. I appreciate you for having Absolutely. a conversation with me. So before we actually wrap up, um, if you can just give... Um, your just like your 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 opinion mm -hmm. um wrapped up opinion maybe a few sentences basically 30 seconds with a person that has been in your that's in your position that used to be um that's in your position that you used to be in right mm -hmm. what kind of advice you would want to give them and to making sure that you know they will be in the position that you're in right now um what would you tell yourself of Kevin Fain 10 years ago? Yeah. What would you tell him? Be aware of the sacrifice and the consequences that comes with it. Um, you, you don't get a lot of time in this world that you're not going to get back. I, I put it to you this way, honestly. Like, when you, when you go into life, you know, you, you try to do things that you don't regret. I'm not saying I regret being into this culture, like into this lifestyle, but 
if I were to look back and talk to that person ten years or well, eight years mm-hmm. before I got into this, I would probably have him maneuver a little bit differently and probably go a different route. Okay. And probably get more involved with the family life and try to figure things out maybe that way than just traveling all over the world and, mm-hmm. and, and just leaving things behind. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I would want, I would let that person be aware of what is he's going to happen in the future. Like what, what's going to occur if you keep going this route, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get everything you wanted money wise. You're going to live like you want, but you're going to sacrifice this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like it's worth sacrificing that, Keep going, cause just you're gonna you're gonna treasure's gonna be big. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. man. So before we wrap up, man, um, social media, shameless plugs, all that good stuff. Oh, so uh, we can find you. You just hit yeah, 10k, yeah. by the way. I, uh, man, I'm probably on that, man. Team. I can't figure it out, man. <laughs> I don't we'll figure it out. Like we got you. I, yeah. I got you. I'll make you for it. But um, where, where can we find you? Um, yeah, it's it's Mr. Fane three. Um, I, that's really. Okay, and if you want to do the social, uh, the YouTube, it's uh, it's it's the Kevin Fain channel. Okay, um, Kevin Fain. Also, if you go on the Facebook, I'm working on the website. It, nice. It'll be done in 20 days, so they're working on it right now. So it, good, that'll good. be Fain Personal Protection Group. If good. you want to get any type of um, security work, of or course, any type of, of executive course, pre- man. protection, cool. um, we'll definitely plug way. that in in, mm-hmm. in the bio and all that. Absolutely, my man. Appreciate you, man. It's been good, man. It's always been a blast, man. Until next time. Thank you.